Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. This is going to be part four of the Eagle Library series and I will link in uh, part one, two, and three down below. And I apologize for beating a dead horse. I just wanted to show you one more thing. And that's creating a very, very large part in Eagle Library. So let's get started. Uh, first, let's uh, well, uh, let's go with this. The part we're going to be making today is the Atmel AT90 can, and it comes in a 3264 or 128 uh, kilobyte size. The package is all the same. This is a, a TQFP. 64 which stands for thin quad flat pack with 64 leads this is by far the biggest part that i have shown you and i'm going to show you some a few tips and tricks to make it very quickly so the first thing we do is we go ahead and open up a library and it's kind of an idiosyncrasy of Eagle, but actually we can just open up any library. It's almost irrelevant which one we open up. Now, in the bar, we type run. And we are looking for a tool called make symbol. Right there. And go ahead and open that up. Now, this tool was made by Matthew Scarpino, and uh, he wrote a book about uh, designing Eagle circuit boards. I learned a lot from this book. This book is called uh, Designing Circuit Boards with Eagle. And you can find, actually, I bought this book at Barnes & Noble, and you can find his uh, the files that support this book at eagle-book.com. So now that we have this open and uh, this tool opened up the maximum amount of spaces it supports, which is fine, but you can actually launch it to, let me show you that real quick. You can launch it to open a specific amount of space. So, so it's run, make symbol. And then let's say six space and six. And when I hit enter, this will open that tool, but now there's going to be six columns and six rows. Just like that. So we want to go ahead and close this out and run make symbol. So as far as the library name, so back to the idiosyncrasy, I can't directly save this to the library that I want to, so I'm just going to name it any kind of bogus library, so test. The symbol is going to be an AT90CAN, and let's just say this is the 128K version, and now we're going to browse for a... A comma separated variable file and I'll show you this file in just a second but as you can see this file has filled in all of the spaces on here up through 63 which it starts at 0 that's why it goes to 63 and uh, let me show you this file quick Yeah, let's just launch it in Excel. So this file is op opened up in Excel and it's saved as a comma separated variable file, which I'm actually, I don't particularly like the way Excel presents it. Uh, so let me show you that file in 
Oh, where, there it is. Notepad++. I actually really enjoy Notepad++. So here's the file in Notepad++. And everything is separated with commas. There is no spaces. And the way it's listed, it's the pin name, the pin location on the package, and what kind of uh, electrical connection it is. So for example, this is a no connect. And I went through these in part two of my library series. So that's what it looks like. And now that we have all of these set up, we can go ahead and hit generate symbol. And just like magic, all of these get filled in. It's not the prettiest. I mean, you could aesthetically clean it up a little bit more, but all of the pins are there. So it starts at pin one, and I talked about this in my previous videos. I like to put the at one, at two, at three at the end of all of my pins. So it starts at pin one, and then it goes all the way around, and it ends at pin 64. So let's clean this up a little bit so first I want to hit the grab the info tool and I want to move this to the names layer and I want to move this to the values layer like that and grab the move tool and I want to move these out of the way for the time being because I like a neater part generally so we're going to clean this up a little bit or at least try to grab the move tool um one two three wait no oh, sorry one two three four five five six seven and eight I think right I think right there will be ah uh, wait if you grab something by mistake you can just hit escape to back out of it like that and I'm not a fan of such dense Pin spacing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, that was nearly perfect. Go ahead and bring all of these over here. Double check that I didn't screw up the order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, now I can grab the move tool and grab this guy. Slide that over here. Like that. And what I can do is I can grab the group tool and go ahead and highlight all of these and hit move group and really slide them over and now we can do the same thing with the rest of these it's three squares up I apologize if this part is kind of boring. Ah, oops. I will try to be quick about it. Or essentially just not as anal. But I do like library components that look good and you can't really argue with that go ahead and highlight all of that and hit move group uh, something to note with move group 
the spot where you click uh, right click before the menu comes down is the spot where you're attached to as you move the part around you can't click directly on a part it kind of screws it up oops escape but just be aware that you want to you just don't want to click somewhere willy-nilly four five six seven eight slide that group over there go ahead and grab you and it group uh, one more over like that and now I can bring those guys in every time like that one two three four squares again I'm sorry this parts kinda tedious uh, something that I did want to talk about and if you're interested I will make a video about it but one topic I have not covered is what do you do in a library part if you have a hole in a board more so than well I really haven't done any through hole components but they're about the same you just place uh, pads you, you place the the through hole pad the green circle instead of the red surface mount pad but everything else is pretty much the same really no difference there let's say 2.5 that looks pretty good yeah this part will be nice and big which may annoy some people oops I'll have to grab the but the way you the way you make a library part with a hole in it is you use the dimension layer use the dimension layer to do that so you would use the wire tool and with the wire tool you would uh, draw lines and circles and whatnot on the dimension layer and you want to set the size of the 2.0 2.0 .0. Two point three, two point three. Ooh, that is just about perfect. Now I want to use the circle tool, and I want to place a circle right there. Go ahead and move it over a little bit. That should denote pin one. Actually, let's. Go like that. 
Now go ahead, grab our name and throw it down there. Go ahead and grab our value and throw it down there. So let me finish my thought. Whenever you're doing, actually, let me talk about that when I get to the package. So now, as I mentioned previously, to take this and move this out of this library, which this isn't saved yet, so you got to kind of be careful a little bit. We want to use the group tool to highlight everything, type in cut in there, and now we're going to right click and go cut group, and now it's moved, and no, we do not want to save it. Now we're going to go file, open library, and I want to open my atmel library like that. We want to make a symbol. And now we're adding to a library that we did before. If you check my previous video, I made the ATA6560 part, and we want to make the AT90 can, oops, AT90 can 128 okay create new symbol and now we want to go ahead and hit paste and here is our part like that and as i mentioned previously i'm going to include a link to the design circuits with design what designing circuit boards with eagle book uh, also i'm going to put the file that created this symbol the comma separated variable file and the well the tool file the uh, the make symbol file that's it sorry I had a little brain fart there and now i want to go ahead and save this and close out of it so now and we're going to use a cheat that we used previously we're going to go to libraries and we want to open the atmel library and i did double check this part does not exist in the atmel library but what does exist in the atmel library is the package and this is the tqfp64 package like that i want to go ahead and turn on all of my layers apply ok grab the selection tool and highlight it like that cut enter go ahead and right click and cut group and i'm clicking right in the middle to align my part like i said whenever you do a copy or a move or whatnot it always remembers the origin of where you did that from go ahead and close out of this File, open, library. We want to go back to the Atmel library like that. Open up the package, and this is a TQFP64. Okay, confirm creating a new part. Use the paste tool. Throw that guy down. See how nice and easy that was? That was phenomenal. I, I love those little cheats. And I did double check ahead of time that this part does match correctly with the layout in the data sheet so uh like i said what i was mentioning before is you have the surface mount smd pads and you have the through hole pads the way you do a a, a hole in your board is you throw the pad down Hit the stop tool, properties, you can change the shape, you can make it long, like that for example, and you can make it larger, so I can increase my drill size like that, okay, and then I would grab the wire tool and I would put it on the dimension layer and I'm on, and I would make the width zero so it makes really fine lines. So then I could actually make this finest, okay? And then throw my lines in like that. Hit the stop tool. And that would actually cut a hole in the board 
like like if you needed to mount something through it like a you like little feet on a usb connector or something like that it's things that need soldered in go ahead and remove all of this like that and now we can go ahead and save this guy like that and now we can create our device so this is the at90 can 128 yep go ahead and create it we want to grab our symbol like that hit the stop tool go ahead create new and grab our package like that the prefix for chips is u and I mentioned the prefixes in part three of my video. Oh, oops. We want to go ahead and hit connect. And this is where those numbers are very helpful. So one, uh, let's do it this way because they're easier to find. 20, connect. 29, connect. Nine connect six connect seven. This part's a little tedious. Eleven fifteen ten thirteen. 12, 17, 16, 14, 8, 3, 4, yeah, I'm sorry, there's not a whole lot of filler. I can discuss while connecting these. Just got to make sure to get the right pin to the right pad or it becomes embarrassing later. Twenty-two. Ooh, there's pin one. But unfortunately, this processor has a whole boatload of pins. Sometimes I wish Eagle would connect them automatically. But I've also used programs that connect them automatically. And it makes me miss the fact that... I can choose to connect them however I want because you run into other goofy things you can connect two pins to the same pad or two pads to the same pin you use this append feature 39 40 41 42 Ooh, that was kind of a nice little burst Seven forty-eight. There's twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-one. I know again, I apologize, this is kind of boring. Thirty three, thirty four, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six. I guess I have forty nine, fifty, fifty one. 
school, there's 52, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, and 53. Okay. Alrighty, now that the, it's all done, all we have to do is hit save, and we have our part. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, I will post the files and links on both my website and down below in YouTube. Uh, if you want to see any more library tutorials, uh, please let me know, and I can put those together. And thank you for watching.